Homo sapiens, who are we? Where did we come from? We begin chapter two in our quest with a continued look into paleoanthropology and the fossil record of our ancient ancestors. Fossils of our ancient ancestors are very rare. It can take many years of arduous searching to find a single fossil. But where do we even begin to search? Let's take a look at the areas where paleoanthropologists have had the greatest success in discovering clues into our past. We will use the ancestral range of the San Bushmen as a starting point. The San Bushmen represent a living length back to our ancestral past. Let's see how that ancestral range matches up to the fossil record. East Africa, especially the Great Rift Valley, has played a central role in human evolution. The ancestral range of the San Bushmen is centered on this key geographic area. As we begin our look at the fossil record, we will see that the Great Rift Valley has been an important player in the story of our quest to understand the human fossil record. We will be concentrating on fossil sites in five African countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, and Chad. Some of the most important fossil finds related to our human ancestors have been discovered in these countries. To find a fossil from, say, 3.5 million years in the past, you need to know where to look. But how does one know where to look? A key part of the answer is geology. Geology is the study of the Earth's physical structure and substance. Geologists are able to date rock layers and fossils by various methods. Radiometric dating is one of the most important methods. Radiometric dating uses the decay of natural occurring radioactive elements to date a rock sample or fossil. This is referred to as absolute dating or calendar dating because it provides an actual time range for the age of a sample. Another method of geological dating is stratigraphic dating, which is a relative dating method. It uses the principle that younger layers of rocks will lay atop older layers of rock. By combining these two methods with other geologic and archaeological methods, scientists are able to date rock layers and the fossils found in these layers. These methods enable paleoanthropologists not only to date fossils, but also point to rock layers where fossils of a certain age may be found. All of this field work and dating of rock layers has led geologists to arrive at a geological time scale for the Earth. Let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with this time scale as it will give us a reference for our continued quest to look into the fossil record of our human ancestors. The age of the Earth is calculated to be about 4.5 billion years old. This 4.5 billion year history can be divided into two broad stretches of time called the Precambrian and the Phanerozoic. The Precambrian stretches from 4.5 billion years ago to approximately 545 million years ago. The Phanerozoic begins 545 million years ago. It is marked by the large-scale appearance of multicellular life forms in the fossil record and marks the beginning of an expansive growth in Earth's biodiversity. The Phanerozoic is divided into 11 periods, the Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, Tertiary, and Quaternary periods. Let's start to look at the fossils of our human ancestors with a trip to the Jurab Desert of Chad, where fossils of one of our most ancient ancestors has been found. The Jurab Desert is located in northwestern Chad in northern Africa. It is part of the Great Saharan Desert System. The specific area where our potential ancestors' fossils were discovered is called the Taurus Manala Fossil Area. In 2001, members of the Franco-Chadian Paleoanthropological Mission led by Michel Brunet, working in the Taurus Manala region, discovered hominid fossils of a new species which they called Sahelanthropus chadensis. The fossils were dated at between 6 and 7 million years old. These are the oldest known fossils of a potential ancient human ancestor. The date of six to seven million years puts the fossils in the same time range as the theorized genetic split between the Homo lineage and the chimpanzee lineage. Because of this, there is some debate among paleoanthropologists as to exactly what role Sahelanthropus plays in the family tree Homo. 
Is it a direct ancestor to Homo, or does it represent some parallel species to our ancient ancestor? Only future research will resolve this question. The current view of Sahel Anthropus is that it probably walked upright, it had the brain size of a chimpanzee, and was probably about the same size as a chimpanzee. Fossils of other creatures found in the same strata include elephants, antelopes, hippos, crocodiles, hyenas, snakes, turtles, and fish. This leads paleoanthropologists to believe Sahel Anthropus lived in an area of wooded savanna with lakes or rivers present. To find an equivalent environment today, we might look at Lake Chad, which lies on the border between Cameroon and Chad. The area around Lake Chad may be representative of the environment in which Sahel Anthropus lived over six million years in the past. We took a look at the geological time scale a few minutes back. The last two periods of the time scale were the tertiary and quaternary periods. These cover the last 65 million years of Earth's history. The geologic boundary between the tertiary and the older Cretaceous layer is known as the KT boundary. This is dated at about 65 million years ago. This layer marks the theorized asteroid strike that ended the reign of dinosaurs and began the rise of mammals. Bad for dinosaurs, but good for the family tree Homo. The tertiary and quaternary periods are divided into smaller time periods called epochs. The tertiary breaks down into the Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, and Pliocene epochs. We would find Sahil Anthropus in the late Miocene epoch. The quaternary breaks down into the Pleistocene and Holocene epochs. We will be concentrating on the late Miocene epoch to the end of the Pleistocene epoch as we continue our quest to understand the family tree Homo. Our quest now takes us to Eastern Africa. We will visit the Tugan Hills in the Baringo district of Western Kenya. The Tugan Hills are part of the Great Rift Valley system of Eastern Africa. In October of 2000, members of the Kenya paleontology team led by paleoanthropologist Martin Pickford and Brigitte Sanu discovered fossils of a new hominid species which they called Auroran tugenensis. The fossil specimens found so far belong to at least five individuals. The fossils are dated between 5.7 million and 6 million years in the past. This puts Auroran in the late Miocene epoch. The fossils were found in the Lakino formation of the Tugan Hills. The fossils were dated using radiometric dating, magnetostratigraphy, and biochronology. The dating of Auroran Tugenensis to around 6 million years in the past puts it in the time frame of the theorized human chimpanzee genome split. Just as with Sahel Anthropus, there is some controversy as to whether Auroran is a direct ancestor to modern humans or a distant relative. Fossil evidence indicates that Auroran was about the same size as a modern chimpanzee. There is evidence from the morphology of the fossil femur of Auroran that indicate it may have walked upright. Upper limb fossils of Auroran indicate that it was likely adapted to a life in the trees. Auroran may represent a transitional species adapting from a life in the trees to one more terrestrial in nature. Future research and discovery will hopefully clarify the questions surrounding Auroran. Fossil evidence found in conjunction with Auroran indicate that it probably lived in a marginal forest environment near a lake or stream. Fossils of animals found in the same strata as Auroran include impalas, leaf monkeys, colobus monkeys, fruit bats, tree hyraxes, and water chevrotains. These are indicative of a forested environment. Based on fossil evidence, it is theorized that one specimen of Auroran was stalked and killed by a large feline. The carcass was carried up into a tree to be eaten. The bones of Auroran were brought down into a body of water where they settled. Over time, the bones fossilized and came to rest in the Lakino Formation where they lay until discovered six million years later. We will end chapter two of our quest here. In chapter three, we will continue to seek answers into the nature of our ancient ancestors with the help of paleoanthropology.